Kia ora and welcome back. I can almost guarantee you that if you've played as Morocco in Civilization V, you've been lied to. I say that not to clickbait you into watching the video, but because these guys are a very powerful Civ, but one that the game is not entirely honest with you about. Indeed, Civilization V is hiding some of Morocco's power. Let me tell you a little bit more about that and more in my Morocco guide. For starters, take a look at this trade route. It's offering me seven gold. In exchange, they'll receive two. I'm currently earning 28 gold per turn and 15 culture. So I'll accept the deal graciously. Of course, it's a yes from me. And you'll notice that my gold per turn goes up by 10, not seven. And my culture goes up by one. Yet we weren't told that when we were accepting the trade deal. That's because, as I said in the introduction, the game is lying to you a little bit. So, this is Ahmad Al-Mansur of Morocco. And as Morocco, you will receive plus three gold and plus one culture for each trade route with a different civ or city-state. This doesn't stack, so you can't send five off to America. It is indeed one trade route per unique civilization or city-state. In exchange, the trade route owners will receive plus two gold for each trade route sent to you as Morocco. It's a nice deal for them, but a much better one for you. Reason why the game lied to you a little bit is because as you noticed in those clips that I just played for you before, some extracts from this very exciting gameplay, by the way, stay tuned. Um, what you'll notice is that actually, the game doesn't tell you about that plus three gold, nor crucially does it tell you about that plus one culture. Reason may be because you should expect it. You're getting it from all your trade routes, but that's not entirely true because as I say, it's actually only for each unique trade route, each unique sieve that you're trading with. So the first trade route that you send to America will make benefit from it, but the second one won't. The game really should tell you about the plus three and the plus one for that very reason, and it doesn't. So bear that in mind, it does make Morocco, by the way, a very powerful civilization to play as you're going to get a heck of a lot of money playing as Morocco. I should note, however, your internal trade routes don't, of course, receive that plus three gold and plus one culture. So you really want to be sending one trade route per city-state and one trade route per friendly civ, because indeed Morocco in Civilization V is an economic powerhouse, but you have to be able to trade to fully realize those benefits, especially in the early game. But to be honest, even right the way through, you're going to need to be able to trade, and that means you're going to want to be people's friends. Do you need to befriend everybody? Almost, not quite. <laughs> I'll show you a little bit more on that later. But what you need to know is Morocco is rich. Indeed, life of the rich and famous. Morocco's unique ability, or rather improvement, is not a building. It's a tile improvement, which tends to actually be a stronger thing to get in Civilization V. Only, of course, if you can get a good one. But by and large, almost all of them are. The only one I've been scarred by is the French's Chateau. But we'll save that for the French's video. For France's video down the line. Indeed, the Caspar is Morocco's tile improvement. It must be built on desert. Which is not too difficult for us to achieve, Ms. Morocco. Because we have a desert start bias. And indeed, do not fear the desert. If you can stack a Petra on top, more on that later, you can really run away with desert tiles but to be honest the cuspa improvement alone is very good it gives you plus one food plus one production and plus one gold onto wherever you build it again it must be built on the desert but man have a look at this it makes desert tiles Jeez. very very strong <laughs> particularly if they're hills if they're near a river as well because you'll get that floodplain bonus too uh, one that is near a river that's a floodplain will innately have two food. Stack that with the base yield of your tile improvement. All of a sudden you're getting three food, one production and one gold. Likewise, if you build it on hills, that three tier will be swapped into production. You'll get three production and one of food and gold. My point here is that these tile improvements turn desert tiles, even the unsuspecting de desert tiles, into at least a three yield tile. But more often than not, if you're near a river or on hills, so on and so forth, you'll be getting five yields out of them. And that is very, very strong. The earlier you can build these, the better. 
thankfully they're unlocked at the medieval era with the chivalry technology. So you should be able to make fairly good use of them. Speaking of fairly good use, the Moroccans also carry a mighty unique unit. By and large though, this is a very, very defensive unit and I would not recommend going to war much. You might see me do it once in this video, but I would not recommend that you go to war, war really at all with Morocco. As I've said, you need to be diplomatic and friendly, and I will touch on it a little bit more later in the video, but reason being chief number one, the Berber cavalry is not a particularly strong aggressive unit. In fact, it is basically the same as the knight that it replaces, except except you receive two unique bonuses. Firstly, you get a 25% combat bonus in friendly territory. That's the Homeland Guard promotion. And secondly, you get a whopping 50% combat bonus in desert. That's the desert warrior promotions. These do in fact combine. So friendly desert tiles will net you a 75% combat bonus. Clearly, very obviously a great defensive unit. There are of course some exceptions. These can be good offensive units if you are fighting in the desert, if you're versing Arabia, if there's another Civ like you in the game who's settling your desert tiles and man if they stole Petra from you in the early game, then maybe you could consider a conquest with the Berber cavalry, but by and large really a defensive unit and that matters for Morocco because in case you haven't gathered already, the strategy for Morocco is absolutely all about money. Money makes the world go round and this gem of the desert is no different to that rule. As Morocco, the diplomatic victory, which is really our economic victory in Civ, let's be honest, is by and large and far away the best victory condition you can go for. Reason being you make a heck of a lot of money with your trade routes, carry that through into the late game. Your unique tile improvement also provides gold from almost all of your tiles, right? If you're playing Morocco right, at least half of your tiles in your main cities should be desert tiles because your desert tiles are fantastic and other civs and players, by and large, again, Arabia and others could be exceptions, but by and large, they won't be interested in them either. You'll also need to focus on being defensive if you want to hold that victory condition and hold your money-making ability for two reasons. Firstly, you need the AI or your opponents on side because you need to trade with them. You also need to ensure that you have diplomatic power. You can achieve that by building the Forbidden Palace, a really wonderful wonder that gives you two more votes at the World Congress, also by buying off city-states. So you need to be making a lot of money to pay off the city-states, to bring them on side, make them your allies. That will give you diplomatic power, ensuring that other players never vote to embargo you. The AI shouldn't do this, but if you annoy them, they might just. And of course, human players will jump at it. So if you're playing multiplayer, you're really gonna need to control those diplomatic abilities. That being said, of course, Opponents do benefit from trading with you, so it's very much an opportunity cost for them. Do they leave you alive to allow you to flourish so they can a little bit as well, or do they cut you off at the knees? And indeed, if you're versing Morocco, I would recommend that you take them down before they get their Berber cavalry, which by the way is unlocked at military science in the industrial era. So it is a sort of mid, later mid game unit, which means there's a prime opportunity to strike against Morocco before they get that because they have basically nothing additional to help defend themselves or to help them attack you. So, of course, this goes both ways. When you're playing as Morocco, one of the key parts of your strategy must be defense. Go big on money. Go big on city-state relations. Try and keep the peace. Try and get as many trade routes online as quickly as possible as you can. You can, of course, use them profits from your trade routes to buy buildings or military units. Some of the really common quick mistakes I see people make as Morocco is that neglection, that absolute neglecting defense early on. Honestly, you need to build walls in your cities and you need to have some defensive units. I recommend archers. So picking up archers quickly as Morocco, not a bad idea at all. In terms of your uh, social policy trees, I do see people making mistakes. Mistakes like I've made actually in this video as I was testing. You don't want to split yourself too wide. 
There are some key trees that'll be great for you, potentially Liberty if you want to get the pyramids early. Also, of course, patronage to keep up city-state relations. Likewise, commerce, very, very powerful for you. And then moving through into the late game, you don't need to fully prioritize science, but you do need to keep up a little bit of a scientific game if you want to be able to defend yourself. That's the key there. It's all about defense. And last but not least, as you can see here, you should try and ensure that you at least have one coastal connection. You are a trading nation, supported by wonders like the Big Ben, the East India Trading Company, Petra, hopefully in your capital, you will be a massive trading empire and you will need to have a sea connection. If you can't settle a good one, I'd recommend you take one, take a city-state and take it as early as you can in the game. Because like I've said, you don't want to be focusing too much on warfare because you are the economic king after all. Thank you very much for watching my Civilization 5 and as always a huge thank you and shout out to my channel members who graciously support me and help me to provide this content. Without them, this video literally wouldn't have been possible. Thank you very much to all of them and to all of you for watching, subscribing, super chatting in the live streams and all of your general support. Really grateful and I'll see you next time. Bye bye everyone and take care.